Welcome to the Perry, Kansas First Impressions um, meeting, um, presented virtually this time. My name is Nancy Daniels. I'm a K-State Research and Extension Community Vitality Specialist. I've done these presentations around the state for about four years to around uh, 60 different communities. And this is my first time in trying to record it and do it. Um, in this way, but I'm hopeful that it might be the way that we decide is better in the future, as most things are when we give up our resistance. Um, so the process for first impressions is this. Um, at the beginning of the year, St. George asked for first impressions process. And um, to my great pleasure, Perry consented to be its partner. I chose Perry because it was a community um, about the same size according to the census, and it was um, within driving distance, far enough away to be unfamiliar with each other, but close enough to make a nice road trip. I trained the volunteers about the visit and the survey on March 11th, and I took the photos uh, then. And uh, for those of you that remember, um, the very next day, the very next week, um, COVID happened and we were forbidden from um, at K-State Research and Extension from going out again. Um, around July, town started opening up cautiously and two visitors from St. George came in July. Um, we need to acknowledge that the pandemic probably plays a role in whether what we saw um, in Perry. Um, most of us, many of us are um, officing at home even as I'm um, talking today in December of 2020. Um, so we hope that you're able to use this video recording to um, create greater discussions and think about the ways that you can improve your community. So how does first impressions work? Well, the truth of the matter is, is we get real immune to what we're seeing in our community. And so um, we need the input of somebody else to remind us what, what is there, what they see. Um, the most common reaction from visitors, from you, from the local community, is they remember just how proud they are of their community and how much they like it. Um, that said, we hope that you'll set some goals and priorities for the next steps to make your community even better. Um, and you may see some observations that you don't agree with or that you that even sting a little bit. But consider, just open up your, the curious part of your mind and, and see it the way that the camera sees it or the way a stranger sees it and think about um, your reaction to it. One person said, feedback is a gift. You don't like all gifts. You don't use all gifts. Some of them you re-gift and give away again. But um, take the feedback that's useful to you. But I want to set a new framework for your thinking about your own community. Uh, ben Winchester is a rural sociologist who's been working for 20 years in rural communities. He works with data as well as real communities. And he wants us to change the way we talk about our small towns. Um, rural is changing, it's not dying. Um, we would already be dead if, it, if this trend wasn't true. The, our, our rural communities would be dead because we know that young people leave. But what we don't acknowledge or ever notice is that others move in. Um, he can document that for the last almost 50 years, um, people in the age, you know, once they have established themselves a little bit, they like coming back to rural. But now that we have the internet, people research a number of places before they move to rural. So you'll hear me talk quite often about what we make visible on the internet. Rural is in the middle of everywhere. You live one place, you work another, and you play another. As long as people have transportation and internet, it's all accessible to you. Now, this is true. Um, not only for you, but for me. Uh, it's no different in my home in Topeka, Kansas. Um, as you well know, we're a, a decent sized community of 120,000, but the job that I chose is an hour away at K-State. And that's a choice that's available to me. With remote work, it's becoming even more available. 
In a survey of newcomers to a rural area, Ben found that the reasons they come are a simpler pace of life, safety and security, affordable housing, outdoor recreation. Um, that's an issue. We love to be outdoors and the pandemic has made us even more aware of how much we like it. Uh, we like the ability to get out. The quality of the schools is very important for a 30 to 49 year old. And believe it or not, a job was not in the top 10 reasons for the communities that he served in Nebraska. Um, that said, uh, in the last four years, as I say, I've been to 60 communities. This is usually the point at which I ask the people in the audience and they range usually average about 40 people in the audience. And it is routine that the, the um, number of people in that audience who would claim this title of brain gain people, people who chose to move back to the community, the community that one of them lived in and they brought their spouse to, or even uh, people who chose it just because it was near to where they wanted to be. Just this year in rural Man Montana, in some of the most remote areas of Montana, um, they did another survey. And while, um, again, the most remote parts of Montana, rural Ma Montana, and they found that every single one of those small communities had new residents. In fact, a quarter of them were not working or they were retired a half had moved to a job, which is a little bit different than this, this data is. But again, these are very remote places. More than a quarter of them brought their own job as a remote worker or as an entrepreneur. So Ben goes on to say, tell us that 46%, almost half of Kansas households moved in a period from 1995 to 1999. Uh, in small towns, we like to say that everyone knows each other, but it's not true. If we were in a community meeting right now, you would look around and realize that there were people in that meeting that you did not know. And so Ben suggests um, picking a time and a sequence and a, um, a time, depending on the, the your experience, to have a newcomer's meal. And invite only newcomers is what his his thought was depending on the size of your community so that the newcomers can look around the room and say I'm not the only one here I'm not crazy for moving to Perry Kansas there's other people that have made this same choice and they can become a support group for each other to help them move into the um, the culture of Perry Kansas don't say you have to live here 20 years to be an insider and don't act like it either. Although Perry, uh, uh, Ben Winchester does caution us not to, um, you know, give people opportunities to participate, but don't um, launch it in on them as if they're new meat. But people really do like um, to be involved. One of the issues for every community is housing. And Ben would tell you that uh, you need to be aware that 30% of your houses are being lived in by people that are over 75. And you can think of homes in your community that were once nice homes, but people lived in them too long, let them run down until they were to the place that nobody wanted them when they were ready to give them up when, when the last um, spouse died and um, they were uh, giving them up. So you know, first of all, housing will be freed up as baby boomers leave, but um, he suggests that rural communities need retirement housing, a place to downsize. Um, as I'm speaking, I'm in my downsized condo in Topeka, Kansas. We didn't want the yard anymore. Uh, we even chose a place with three floors, but which is not ideal. But um, we're happy to be in a place that we can manage and um, doesn't have a yard to take care of. So let's look at Perry's data. Um, the data gets a little squirrely at the end of the census. And so um, 
to orient you to this page, notice that on the left is the 2018 estimate. Um, the census estimates that you are down 3.8% since 2010. But what is that? Like 30 people, 30, um, 30 people <laughs> and um, 35 people. So that, you know, in, in eight years, it would be easy to make up 35 people in terms of quality of life issues and so forth, you know, make it a welcoming environment. Um, you're a well-educated um, community with 95% um, of your, your community at age 21 has completed high school or GDD. The red numbers there are the Kansas average and you are higher than the Kansas average. Um, not as well um, educated as far as college education, but that um, doesn't mean a thing in this world. Um, now that we've got, we need the skilled tradesmen, tradesmen as well. Uh, and those don't require a college education. The poverty rate is a little higher than the Kansas average. The median age is a little bit higher than the Kansas median age and the household income is a little bit lower than the Kansas, than the Kansas average. Your website um, is perrykansas.org. You are very lucky to have a skilled um, person doing your volunteer website for Perry Pride. Um, and, and we thank that volunteer for doing that. Uh, one thing to note is that there are five websites above your website on Google. And so that's a place that could be improved. Uh, I'm certain that your, your person has the skill to do that, um, but it's just the place that we think could be improved. Um, the website and other, okay, so, so when our visitors now I'm to the meat of the presentation from your observers. When your observers came in July, we asked them to look before they came at web, the website and other search sites and tell us what they see. And what they saw was, these were their comments um, and you will find them in those, that compiled report that I gave you. Um, they said Perry appears larger than the 929 people that they thought it, that the census thought it had. Uh, they, they were pleased to see that you have a library, a city hall, a community building, a fire department, a city shop. Uh, they saw the Perry Pride activities listed and they were really impressed with the goal of unifying citizens across all the demographics. They saw mobile home parks, trails, schools, farmers markets, and um, they talked about the fact that they made notes about what they wanted to see. So that's great that all of that was so visible. On Facebook, there is, uh, this is something I often see or almost always see in communities your size. Uh, Facebook generates a page called Things to Do in Perry, Kansas. And I do not know these skills, but I've been told by people who do have these skills that it's an easy thing to claim this website and personalize it to be your own, if that's something you choose to do. You also have the Perry Pride um, Facebook page, and um, this is what it looked like uh, when I compiled this report in late November. There are dozens of Perry, Perry Facebook pages, and this is an opportunity for you to get together um, and think about ways that you could co-market <coughs> and have more impact um, on your messaging. So the first question we ask them is to do a drive through of the community and just give their overall first impressions. We ask them to go to all the entrances and, and observe what they see. And what your visitors said was what a clean community this is. Um, we don't know whether it's just that you take pride in your homes and yards or whether the city has super duper co code enforcement, but it's really clean. Um, they saw no junk from either entrance. Um, they love the rock concrete welcome sign. They 
um, this person said she knew that there was a trail someplace, but she just couldn't find the trail sign and eventually used the Google, Google to find it. And they saw lots of trains while they were there. So in March, when I was here, uh, when you see italicized words, these are my observations. Um, I saw more than one person cleaning up their yard while I was there. Yes, I saw the trail sign. And yes, I did see a train while I was here. Um, as your visitors said, there's, it's just remarkable with all that free space down here that you don't have a junk and trash. Um, it just really is nicely kept. Um, good job, Perry. Um, here are some of the observations along the highway and um, not just in, in the Perry Lake sign, which is great to have those two things linked, but in March, I saw evidence of, of the, the um, closeness of Perry Lake. Um, somebody was adjusting their boat as they were taking it home or taking the lake or taking the storage or whatever, whatever you do in March. Um, these are the buildings we saw. The local merchant signage, um, in my opinion, really contributes to the community spirit. Um, that sense of, um, you know, with the, with the um, items here to tell us what's going on in the community. Um, very neat, well-kept sign. That's sometimes a easy thing to not have happen. Um, your visitors thought were impressed with the number of businesses. Um, they were sad that there were so many neat old buildings empty. And I guess I would say that that's true in every community, whether it's Topeka or um, Perry, that's just a way that, that we are changing. Um, not, not that we should accept it, but just notice it and think about what we can do about that. Businesses seem scattered over more than one area. And um, so that's why we take pictures out here of what we call the downtown business area. Uh, that's not my impression of what downtown was, but, you, but your main sources of business are somewhat scattered. They were sorry to see that the grocery store had closed. I would remark, um, sometimes it wasn't easy to tell visually what was closed and what was open, that's good, but it's also um, um, a problem if people are left wondering what's going on here. Um, this, this looks like a closed place and in fact, it is a closed place. Perhaps it would be even more evident if we took down that sign. Um, you know, one of the things that the idea of scattered businesses, I'm checking my notes and, and we used to take, we used to have a survey question about was the, was the town uh, well planned? Our rural communities have the structures that they have and the places that they had to put them. And that's just a fact that we found. We took the question out because we just deal with the structures that we have. Give you a little time to look at what we saw downtown. Some downtown business buildings are residences, and um, but the comments from the community or the um, visitors were that um, you could clearly see the businesses that were open, and they found people to be uh, very willing to um, answer questions. Um, let's see. Um, you know, but the, the idea that the downtown buildings are residents is not a problem to me. I think that that's a very positive sign for a community. Um, buildings need people in them. And in fact, it's something that I'm really encouraging to other places, even if they have a store at the, in the first floor to start adding, um, um, residences in the top floor. So that is not a criticism. It's just the fact that some of your buildings do have our residents. 
in the carpet and flooring business, the uh, two people I spoke with really knew their business. And this person's looking for carpet in the future. And she said, I just might come back. They were impressed with the Diamond Everly roofing building. It looked very nice and very busy. Um, noticed the Holiday Inn Pet Resort and they ate lunch at the bar and grill. They hoped to talk with area people in their town. People would have, um, would have sat and chatted across the tables, but uh, that wasn't their experience in Perry. And it's not necessarily the experience everybody wants to have. Customer service was okay. Um, they thought it was exceptional at the carpet store. Casey's, uh, we talk about other retail shopping areas and I always coach them that in most towns and Perry certainly fits this profile. Uh, in most towns, there's downtown where you shop and then there's the highway that goes next to it. And so this is what we call a, a, the other retail there along Highway 24. Um, the visitor said, Casey's is a place I normally stop when traveling, but this one didn't have the clean restroom I've come to expect and it looked old. Um, Bernie's was actually a nicer stop, cleaner and larger than I expected from the outside. And she notes that Bernie's had fried food similar to what we could have had, we could, what we did have actually at Perry Bar and Grill. Now, one thing I would ask is, um, do, do you want the visitor to have to come into your store to find that out? Um, making that apparent from the outside would, would likely capture more of that Highway 24 traffic. Um, other retail shopping areas, again, these are some pictures that we have uh, next, you know, from the highway. We asked about industrial parks and the visitors said it doesn't appear there is one. They saw the ham pickup trucks and they, had, and they looked to see what that was. Um, they found an MCM location. I took a picture of the, of the um, elevator. Um, secondhand rose was a bit of an eyesore. However, it was mowed, weeded, clean and fenced. And just a note that, you know, your, if you want to bring industry in, I'm not sure you have room to bring industry in, but the truth is they won't find that industrial park by driving by. So as long as you have yourself listed with the Kansas Department of Commerce, that should be adequate. And then the data observation here is the truth of the matter is just like this business owner, entrepreneurs who choose to start their small businesses are responsible for more than half of the net new jobs created in the United States every year. And for, you know, if you have any small businesses, small, if you have any buildings that are open, Consider the impact that could have if you um, used your internet access, your global marketing, um, to make that business into something that's accessible and sustainable by using outside um, marketing, not just from Perry, business, Perry traffic. We ask about healthcare services. Um, this is an area, you know, I don't know whether you've noticed, but I'm trying to notice that Sometimes we can't tell what we're looking at. And so from my observation driving through town, I thought maybe you did have a medical clinic um, that appears that it's actually closed. You might consider taking down that sign um, and even making it a, or, or putting a sign on it, if this is true, putting a sign on it to make it apparent that um, it's available for someone else to use for rent, for sale, whatever is whatever. Um, your residents indicated that the Lawrence Hospital is building a medical facility just 10 minutes from Perry and people are, seem happy with that. Um, on the web, it appears there is a chiropractor. Um, in reality, your visitors told me that this is not open. Um, and, the, and they did not find the chiropractor. So um, again, help us to be clear what's open and what's not. One thing I will tell you is that, that I really like, I've seen some small communities your size that put a listing on their city page, their city website about healthcare, and they point out all the options that are there. Um, 
in one community recently, they suggested they needed a medical option. I would argue that not everybody wants to go to the same location here in town. I think that's probably what, what this medical clinic found out. People have, you are close enough to Topeka and to Lawrence and to Kansas City that people have plenty of choices. So on your website, um, list your options um, for those things and tell how many minutes you are from those options. Because if I were coming to you from um, Overland Park, Kansas, it's likely it could take 20 minutes to get to the hospital nearby, um, even though it's in the same zip code that I am. So listing Topeka, Lawrence and Kansas City options for doctors dentists, chiropractors, um, hospitals, uh, makes it evident that you're in the middle of everywhere. Um, housing is always a challenge for every small community. And um, in the visits with people, your visitors said that um, Perry is in their conversations, um, the person they talked to indicated that Perry was somewhat landlocked. And if that's true, then, um, you know, that, that creates a certain parameter to your discussion. Um, but their comments are that there were very few of it homes apparently available for a new residence. Um, however, the homes that were there were very nice homes that anyone would like to live in. Um, and they didn't see much space for growth. We like to see a variety of homes, variety of sizes. As I said, I'm to the place I want a smaller home. It's not a it's not a problem that it's a smaller home. Uh, visitors could not tell what homes are available for rent, uh, if any. And we usually, um, we usually urge them to go to City Hall and they tried, uh, but, and according to the hours, um, they should have been able, somebody should have been there. And I don't doubt that it's a pandemic issue. But just be, avail just be aware that when visitors come, they're probably going to go to City Hall. So try to be diligent about making it apparent where, when and where they can find you. If there's a phone number they need to call, let them give them that phone number. Um, and they were impressed with your mobile home park, um, with how nice and clean looking it was um, and, and just some place that, that was a decent place to live. Okay, your housing data, according to the census data, um, again, it gets a little squirrely. The website has gotten more difficult to use um, lately, uh, but according to their data, we think you have 426 houses and 94% of them are occupied. That's a, that's a great problem. Um, although it is, <laughs> A problem if you want to move to Perry, there are very few houses to choose from. Um, you have a very high owner occupancy rate, which is, you know, owners tend to take better care of their homes. And that's probably one of the things we're seeing. Um, however, if people are starting out, there are very, there aren't very many homes that they can occupy. Uh, family households, you're pretty close to the state average. I look as the family households. Family households are anybody who has um, children under the age of 18 in their home, even if they're not related to them, those are called family house households. And um, to me, this percentage is uh, an indication of the, the need for and the vibrancy of the, the school system. So then we go to schools. And as you know, um, that's something that is important to us uh, and to your new residents. They want to know um, about your schools. And so um, the schools, according to these visitors, they thought they looked very nice and well-maintained. That's important. Um, they spoke with someone who told them that your students live in three different counties. Um, they think, there is a preschool in the district. That might be something that would be helpful to make more apparent. Um, what an advantage. You have a community college, a high school, a middle school, and elementary schools all in the same Perry um, Township. 
it would be fantastic if you'd make that as apparent to a bit, to a person on your web page as possible. And again, that might be co-marketing. You know, maybe that's just about putting links to your web page um, to these other um, assets. Here's what your schools look like in March. I really like this sign here by Highway 24. Um, first of all, I hope that it makes your students look twice. Uh, second of all, it makes us know that you care about the safety of your students. And I think that's, um, that's an important message. Um, Highland Community College, um, that's the way it looked in March. And here's what school information, again, really important to make your school information uh, apparent to people. Your visitors came in August or in July. And so they said that there was a lot of information about reopening the schools. Uh, and we want you to remember and your schools to remember, both your school website person and, and the city person that Schools are an important, one of the audiences are those prospective um, people who are thinking about where to go to live. I really like on your um, web page, seeing kids um, on the web page. It helps us picture, you know, if I'm considering coming here, wow, those kids look like they'd be a healthy influence for my student. I could see my student uh, being happy there. Um, but, and, and again, it's the pandemic, I understand that. Very often your school websites, and I say this on almost every visit, your school websites will communicate better to the people who are already at your school than they communicate to others. And so you in Perry LeCompton schools know why you love your schools. I mean, maybe your marching band takes first every year and 35% of the school is a marching band. Maybe you have a math teacher that takes people to state competitions. Maybe, you know, you have a multitude of reasons why you love your schools. Tell us that story. Whatever that story is about why you love your schools, make it apparent to the rest of us. Childcare we, is really important. It's an economic driver for your community. It's an early education driver. It's really important to the success of your community, um, but we're not gonna find it as visitors and that's okay. It's, um, it's not necessarily a great thing to say, hey, there's small children in this, in this house, notice us. Um, so you're, you were no exception in Perry. Our visitors did not see evidence of childcare. Um, the Jefferson County data from um, Child Care Aware tells us that you are serving about 40% of the need for child care in your community. Um, and Child Care Aware wants you to know that um, there is a action plan um, resource here and that they have child care specialists who would love to help you to take action on creating either the kind of uh, quality or quantity of child care that you want to have for Perry. Faith and religion. Um, your visitors saw churches and just like the homes, they were well maintained. They did not notice any faith-based community services. I would call these blessing boxes to be uh, a community uh, service. There may be others that we didn't notice. You've seen this building more than once until I get right in front of it. I didn't realize it was a church. Um, I kept wondering uh, some of those other pictures what it was. Um, but you have churches in your community. The visitor said from the pictures, it appears there's a very active farmer's market on your website. Um, they could see that Perry Pride was active. If I'm not mistaken, you have a pride sign outside your town and I failed to take a picture of it. Um, on the day that I was there, you were just completing um, the fire department's pancakes and raffle. And I think that's fantastic that you have a sign 
that can emphasize what's coming up, what's next. And likewise, fish fry. Public infrastructure. Um, this is every place except the downtown uh, business area. Um, they thought residential streets were clean. Um, some of the business areas were a little less so. The sidewalks appeared well-maintained. And I would tell you that that's not something that we're good as res uh, visitors to see. Maybe they saw some sidewalks, there might be one in there, um, but you need to evaluate that as residents. Do you have the right sidewalks in the right places? Um, can your children walk to school? Um, you know, one of the advantages that I think rural communities have is that safety aspect. Um, I call them free range kids. You know, I wouldn't dream of letting my kid walk to school school in Topeka, Kansas, but um, I just revel in going to these small towns and seeing a gaggle of kids walking home from school or getting on their bikes and going across town. Um, that's what people want and they like, but we want them to be safe um, while they're doing it. So here's what I saw um, on the afternoon that I was here. You know, if there are more pictures you need to take, keep in mind that pictures really do reveal things differently. Even to very familiar places look different when you uh, put it in a picture. City hall hours were posted as eight to 12 and one to five, but they did not find it open. Um, and they didn't find anybody, uh, any notice that something was different because of COVID. We ask about fire, EMS, and police. And uh, frankly, we kind of hope that we don't see a, a police car approach us behind us, but um, they did not see it, one. They could tell there was police protection from their web search. What I usually talk about here is just as a resident, it is of interest to you what your ISO um, classification is, because that has an impact the level of training that your volunteer fire department has, um, has an impact on your, um, your ability, your, your town's um, insurance rates. Um, it was actually the Perry Fi Volunteer Fire Department that came to one of my grant workshops and taught me that. And um, thank you, Perry Fire Department. I've been using that story for the last um, four years. Um, they were very excited that Perry has a library and I wish they could have seen it. I did see it because we met there to train your volunteers. What an asset to the community. And it's not, you know, what is important that it's really to the community is that it's evident to people when and where they can come uh, to make, um, to find it open. Um, so, it's not important that it wasn't open when they were there, but they need to have a reliable way to predict how to find it open. Um, city parks and sports. Um, um, I found one park that I would call a park, um, but we also consider the sports complexes to be part of the community. In fact, in many towns, um, when they need a new weight room or a new exercise room, they've gone in together and created that between the school and the community and offered it to, the access to everybody. Um, and so that's, you know, that's what they consider these sports complexes to be community places too. I love seeing things like this, that sense of community pride and support for the um, youth is great. They found the walking trail to be difficult to find. And I am a walker, I love to walk. Um, I saw, I did see that um, rock wall, but it wasn't that rock notice of the, the trail. But I had the question in my mind, do I just start from here or do I drive someplace to get to the trail? It's, it wasn't completely clear to me either. Here's what they saw. I don't take these restrooms and public parks for granted anymore. That's quite an accomplishment 
to have and to maintain um, a restroom in the in the park. So good job. Uh, recreation and tourism. Are you known for an attraction? You know, they didn't name Perry Lake, but that's obvious to you. Um, so maybe it needs to be more obvious to a person looking on your um, website. Um, we are right next door. We are the last stop and the first stop away from Perry Lake. Um, they noticed the digital signs and the posters at the convenience store for upcoming events. And that's fantastic that you're using more than one way to publicize. Um, good job, Perry Pride. They could see all of the events, all of which were canceled this year. But um, nevertheless, they could see that this is a community that tries to have fun together. Um, they could see the natural and man-made features that would draw people. Again, they didn't mention Perry um, Lake, but they did talk about the trail. You know, we do like our activities, out, our outdoor activities. They like the visual appeal of the mural on the building next to City Hall. Um, this obelisk is fascinating. Uh, anything that you can do to make that more visual, visual um, is great. Um, FYI, I googled Perry, Kansas obelisk, and I found a good history to the obelisk on your Facebook page sometime in the past. Um, so it's not that it's not visible, but it could be more visible. Perry Lake. Um, we ask about a visitor center, and uh, you know the other obvious question that, that answer that isn't there is. The most common place that people ask about things are at that Casey's or the um, the other convenience store on the on Highway 24. Um, so check out your pay attention to the customer service those folks give. Um, frequently, that's where they get their information, and so you know we have a program at K State that's not widely used, but uh, we have a training program for customer service, and there are others, but pay attention to that customer service. In your town, as in most others, if you had a new teacher or a new resident that wanted to find out information about where would I find rental housing or childcare, um, where would I find, are there any houses that may be for sale that aren't listed yet? Um, we would expect that City Hall would serve this purpose, and that's why it's important to us that it's apparent to people how to find that city hall open. Again, COVID happened, we get it. Uh, what would bring you back? Well, the bar and grill was nice, but I don't know that I'd drive an hour, more than an hour. Um, the carpet store may bring me back. Um, their most positive observations, the ones they'll leave with are how clean and well-maintained the homes and yards are that proximately location, 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 you've got the location and the friendliness, you know, that's not um, something you can, you can buy. So good job for being friendly people. The biggest observation uh, obstacles or challenges that they noticed, they talked with business owners and they felt that um, sometimes the communication between city and business could be better. Um, they saw that you're somewhat landlocked or they felt that you were and getting more businesses into town. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in some of the resources. Six months from now, what will they remember about Perry, Kansas? Just um, clean residential areas, uh, the carpet store, they don't have any negative uh, Im impressions to, to talk about, which is fantastic. Okay, so if I were to summarize some of the things that I've talked about as I went through, um, you know, make your web page appear higher on a search for Perry, Kansas. Uh, help visitors know the purpose of the buildings and whether and when the business is open. Create a tab for healthcare on your city site and note the travel time to various healthcare services. And consider a tab on your city website that tells why you love your schools. Or alternatively, um, 
work with the school to make that really apparent on the landing page of the school. Don't make it look for look. Don't make us look for it. We it should be obvious to us why you love your schools. And honestly, it doesn't have to be a certain academic achievement or anything like that. Just quotes from your residents or um, things that they that your kids say about your schools are um, just as important. So the leadership team that I knew about, the people who visited, I really would like to thank these folks. I think you're all part of Perry Pride, um, but thank you for making this work um, through this difficult time. And they're the, also the Perry Pride group will be leading the discussion about going forward. Um, please know that K-State Research and Extension has um, myself and others who really wanna help you with any challenges or any resources. Um, your local extension director, David Key, is, is one of the people that we um, look to as well. David is just um, top notch. He's got a lot to help you with. So David Key or myself, any of us would love to help Perry. So I wanna leave you with some resources. Um, Kansas Pride Program, you're using that very, very well. Um, we, that is, if you don't know, if you're not already actively involved in Perry Pride, it's a way for local communities to identify what they would like to preserve, create, or improve for their future. And then those volunteers can pull together to create their ideal community future. Um, I alluded to the fact that I teach grant writing workshops and we are soon in uh, January, 2021, we will be starting online training for these workshops. They'll still be hosted in the local communities. David Key has done four of these workshops, one in each of the Meadowlark District's counties. Um, and we could do this again. Um, and now people, actually David's workshops have drawn people from Nebraska and Atchison already. So people come long distances, but now they don't have to come long distances. They can be online. So keep that in mind if there's still more people that want to learn. Um, we have a call that, that I'm the host for called the First Friday uh, Entrepreneurship Calls or First Friday E-Calls. Um, you can find out what the next calls scheduled topics are on our calendar of events. And you can see any previous recordings um, at the, on, on the website that I've given you there. If you want to be included in that, David or I can help you be included in that. These folks um, run a couple of websites. One of them is Small Biz Survival and one of them is SaveYour.Town. And I'm gonna talk about both of them. Um, I find the subscription to their website, to their resources to be so worthwhile. They come about weekly and they give us new topics and information um, that's just really helpful. Um, this is fresh, brand new information that I found from them. Um, according to a Gallup poll, and I, according to a Gallup poll that's on the bottom of this page, Americans under age 30 are the only group whose top desired place to live is not rural. And even for those, that group of 18 to 29 year olds, if you were to look where they want to live, um, it's almost equal that they would like to live in rural versus um, their second choice. So I guess it's this and this. Um, so, you know, that's a real thing. But now the pandemic has chosen, has shown us um, just how huge this quote is important. The, whoops. The pivot to remote work is the biggest, fastest transformation of the labor market since World War II mobilization. People didn't think that they could work remotely. They didn't think they could trust their employees to work, work remotely, but in fact, They've learned that they're quite um, productive when they're um, working out of their homes. 
They're expecting to see a huge outmigration. They're expecting that the fact that people can find less expensive housing, uh, they will expect that people are, will move far beyond the commuting distance. My hour commute is about the maximum I would want to, but if I only had to go to work once a week or once a month, then that, that space becomes much wider. Um, these same people run the Save Your Town um, website and they're talking about the same thing. Is your town remote work ready? And their webinars are just fantastic. They've been a guest on our first Friday call more than once, um, but I highly uh, recommend their, their um, webinars. They have a small cost involved, but you can show them as many times as you want to as many people as you want, as long as you're in the room. This group is actually in, in 2020, they've actually quit meeting and they may not come back, but it's a concept that you could easily emulate where people basically just come back, come together with their calendars and say, you know, all those websites, web pages that we talked about, you know, what's going on? What could we promote? How could we talk about the fair or the next uh, fish fry or the soup with Santa event? and coordinate what we put on our websites. Um, these folks had a professional marketer, I think you do too, who basically um, led the discussion about what can we teach each other? What have you learned? Um, and certainly, um, as I say, um, I'm the professional teaching grant writing and I learned something from the Perry Fire Department that I've been using for the last four years. So um, everyone has something to teach and something to learn. We want you know, to know that the Kansas Department of Agriculture would be happy to work with your community to find the best opportunities for growth using the assets of your region. And we want you to know about the Kansas Healthy Food Initiative, which is at K-State and is now part of the uh, Kansas K-State Research and Extension. But um, they have a goal to increase healthy food, um, to link some of those farmers markets and grocery store ideas so that we can improve the health and economic development of Kansans and their communities. So here we are at the end, um, and here's a place I hold so dear. Um, but I am always here to help you, and I hope uh, that you'll call on me. So with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you for joining us.